Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to be starting a bit of a mini-series on GUI which stands for the Graphical User Interface. So in Visual Basic and as well in my C Sharp playlist uh, we've been working with Windows Form applications as opposed to boring console applications that you run on a command line like with C++. Uh, I mean in a, in a college course that's what, that's what they usually do but Anyway, so in this uh, this video, in the next video or two, I might be able to do this in just two videos. Is go through as much as I know. Uh, I, I as I told you at the beginning, there's uh, we did some of this stuff earlier, the printing, the print dialogue. So we would I won't even do this because that's in my uh, the main part of Visual Basic Level One, uh, and some of these as well. So uh, these are already covered. So that's good. And we did the timer already and I really don't know how to do almost any of this but uh... and I don't know any of this either uh... but this will be its own video menus and so I'm gonna start with the containers and then go through as many of these as I can uh, at least the ones I know I know like almost all of these okay so let's start with the group box so I'm just gonna start with a basic standard group box all of these pretty much work the same way you can just read the descriptions and it's pretty obvious how they work so I'll just click the group box and I can't even see my windows form. There we go. I'll widen it a bit. And I move my group box here. Oops. Uh, and then you can just click and drag, you know, resize it as you wish. I'll just resize it like this because I know what I'm going to be using it for later. And we don't need to change the name really. You can change the background color of it if you want. That would look kind of weird though. And I'll just call it a radio button group because I'm going to be using radio buttons with this thing. Uh, and yeah, that's really it. There's a very faint uh, border too. I, I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's there. Now, I'm going to create a button, and this button's going to be pretty much what I use with, uh, with testing everything that I'll be showing you. So if you put anything on top of this thing, or any all the elements that you have inside of this group box, if you copy this group box and paste it somewhere else, that element will... Uh, the other... Um, uh, what do you call them? Controls will copy with it. So just just to bear in mind, it's actually really nice. So it can be very convenient. And well, I don't want that button on there. So I want it to be by itself down here. So I'll just call it BTN. I don't enter. I'll call it enter. And I should probably tell you now. Um, I I I've mentioned this the very first time I started doing this but uh... this ampersand that you put in the text what that does is it adds a little underline there see that under the enter and when you press f5 and run this application you don't see that but if you hold down the alternate key it now appears and while you have it held down if you press e uh, nothing happens but if you hold down the alternate key while pressing the other key that's underlined like the e it'll activate that button so that's what that does. Uh, so watch out. Make sure that you, that you don't make multiple buttons with the underlining the same letter. Otherwise, that won't really work out. Okay, so pointer, uh, whatever. So we d we've done buttons. We know how to do that really, really well. So let's do checkboxes. So how do these work? Basically, um, checkboxes, they're not really grouped specifically, so you can just put them wherever. Uh, I, would, I would still uh, keep them wherever you would like. So let's just make two and make one checkbox I'll call it check one and I'll call this one check two and you can mess with the text so I'll make that dinner and I'll make this one breakfast and in order to check which ones uh, or to see which one if you want a certain event to occur when one's uh, clicked or one's one is entered and basically you can create an if and then the name of that check so check one uh, is checked and see if that's true then let's have a message box pop up whoops uh, dot show it's time for breakfast so info okay and information 
There we go. So I click save, and then when I build this guy, uh, nothing happens when you click enter, but if you have breakfast highlighted, it says it's time for breakfast. If you have both highlighted, it'll still work. So you can always uh, make a different kind of if statements. You know how to do that kind of stuff. We've already done the complicated stuff in determining whether or not uh, one's checked or if multiple are checked. Uh, but if you only want one specific uh, item checked, that's where radio buttons come in. Uh, but I'm not quite there yet. So let's do check list box. So basically here, a check list box is go to items and its properties and you know breakfast lunch dinner or just as many as you want and it's all these different kind of guys here and in here let's make this a comment here so we don't have to worry about this one activating again so now let's just check that one so we didn't give a specific name to that one actually I'm sorry about that so let's just call it check list one very bad name checklist one and then dot checked items so you'll type that in dot contains and then see what it contains inside so if you if I want the only the one that says lunch to do something or if, or if at least the one that says lunch is uh, checked then I can have a little message box appear here so time for lunch. Um, info. Okay. Click save. Run this thing. And if I have dinner, it doesn't work. But if I have the lunch, I'll just uncheck that one. Now it says time for lunch. And there's no sound because um, I didn't put an icon after the button okay. So in case you're wondering about that one. Uh, the next one is a combo box. How these guys work is it's pretty much the same thing, except it's a drop down instead. So you throw in item one, whoops, um, item two, item three. Click OK. You don't see anything, but if you press F5, then you'll see your your uh, different items. And how this one can pretty much work out is without a comment if and what I call it so it's just a combo box in general so combo box one dot selected index so I'm gonna use that selected index is equal to and then a number now remember selected index or indices uh, start with zero with combo boxes just like with list boxes so we can only in this one check for zero through two because I only put three items in so let's put number one so that should be the second item and I'll just I'll just copy and paste this right here paste and then let's run this so it should say time for lunch only if I have the second one so that's not the second one but that's the second one so that one worked um, let's see here so combo box date time picker I'll be doing dates separately we've done labels uh, I, I don't know if I've done labels yeah I have I have let me delete this it's and I'm pretty sure you guys have too link labels let's check this guy out so how do you work with links so you can you know change the link color you can change the visited link color the text that it says I'll throw in Yahoo um, Yahoo and just a bunch of other stuff that you can just look through this it's um, that, uh, this is it while you're holding it down I believe and uh, just click this and let's type out process dot start and then throw in the URL. So HTTP. Oh wait, no, this is Yahoo I'm talking about. So um, if I click save, it should open it using the your default your default browser. So mine should know. Okay, so it worked. I don't know why I'm getting a an unhandled. Oh, I'm getting an unhandled thing because of the, because uh, my little update thingamajigger. So let me open Firefox. Yeah, see, I get that stupid update thing. Oh, pardon my language. I'm sorry. So if I already have that open, then I run my application. Then if I click this, see now I didn't get that error. So 
Uh, so that was just because of the update. That's why I got the error. So don't forget about that. Don't. Yeah. Uh, so I'll close that. And what should I do next? Here, a label, link, label, list box. Wait, no, I've done list boxes plenty of times. List view. Um, displays a collection of items in one of five different views. I don't know the purpose of those. I've never used them. Uh, mask text boxes. I guess something special happens if you type something in. I don't know how to use these either. Month calendar. Just like with these, I'll be showing you when I go into a date video. Uh, a notify icon. I don't use that. Um, numeric up and down. Okay, so... Uh, basically, someone can just go up and down from zero to something else, and we want to check the value. So this is pretty much the default value, I believe it is. If I type in like 50, I think it should. Oh yeah, see, the default will become 50. So if I just make this a comment right here, in order to check the value, let's do a, a range instead this time. So if uh, I, I already forgot what it's called, numeric up and down. Uh, dot value is greater than I don't know let's go 60 and numeric up and down dot value is less than 70 then let's throw this copy or I already have it pasted I think so um, let's throw in good job I don't know why there we go so I click save and if I run this, if I click enter, nothing happens. If I go exactly 60, nothing will happen. But if I go between, then I get the good job. And if I go up to 70 exactly, then it doesn't work. But then down to 69, and it does work. So that's good. Um, so what else do we have here? Um, picture box is the next one. No big deal. You can Just a little picture box. You can throw the image that you would like in there. Um, so if the import, oh, I already imported a picture from when I did my test run. So you just click import, you find the image, and then click OK, and then there it is. Um, and of course, it's not big enough, but uh, it'll do. It'll do. Uh, so what's next? Picture box. So oh, progress bar, not yet. Radio buttons. Okay. So I'm gonna throw in some radio radio buttons. Now these are really important because you can only select one at a time for every group that they're in. Now what I mean by that is let me get you these line up. So this is number one, right? So I call that I'll just call that one. I'll call this two. And I'll call this three. But if I paste one out here, call it radio button four then what happens is it becomes its own group so when I run this notice I can go between these guys right but this one is its own thing this did not unselect so just a thing to remember and just like with the checkboxes because uh, I'm running out of time and I want to show a little bit more all you do is type the name that you gave that um, radio button and see if it's checked Checked equals true, so you'll be doing it like it, like I have it right up here, exactly the same. And oh yeah, and that's another thing with checked boxes as opposed to radio buttons. You could use the and to see if you have at least you know two specific ones checked or something like that with the check boxes. So that's pretty cool. And what's the last one? So rich text box. All this does is allow you to. I show this one with the saving and the printing dialogues. Um, you can just type in as much as you want there and that's a regular text box we've used those before so I'll show you a tooltip really quickly just click tooltip press and then what happens is just by having that there if you go to let's say this one um, the tooltip uh, on tooltip one appears right here this little option for this no matter what you click if you have a tooltip little thing majigger here this will activate and you can type in whatever you'd like so this radio button is lonely so then uh, and this is like uh, how long it'll last if you have this highlighted it'll show you like you know how long it'll last and whatnot when it's up there so you run it and you hover it says this radio button is lonely and the very last thing I'd like to show you really quickly need some more space is the web browser so this will use Internet Explorer unfortunately it does and yeah, you can throw out the default URL. 
So HTTP, W, Google, and then when you run it, there's Google right here, and you know you can type in like search Yahoo, I don't know, and click Yahoo here, and then yeah, there you go, that's it. So that's a whole bunch of different things. I don't even know how, what kind of title I'm going to give this video, but I'm almost out of time. So I hope you found this useful for figuring out how to work with graphical user interface, and I'll see you in the next video.